Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and without further ado we have been waiting for a very long time for me to be able to show you off my version of Radagast the Brown. So here it is Radagast all primed and ready to go. This is a Games Workshop resin miniature and this is one of the display models that they make as well. So this uh, comes in a pack of three different versions of Radagast. This version on his sleigh, a version standing alone and a version where he can ride the great eagles as well. And we're going to start by painting the skin as as always. Now I'm going to use the Citadel set to paint uh, the skin for this one uh, just to mix things up and give you guys a few different uh, colors and paints and things like that that we can use and I'm going to start by using the Cadian Flesh Tone. Uh, I start by using the Cadian Flesh Tone purely because it's a little bit of a brighter color so this allows me to paint brighter more vibrant uh, skin colors rather than using like a darker color like Bugman's Glow to begin with. Now, because we are painting Radagast the Brown, we're going to paint a lot of, or if not the majority of, his cloak and everything like that in a dark, dark brown colour, because we're going to build these colours back up later. So I'm going to use my favourite basing colour, which is the Dark Rust 302 from Vallejo. Um, if you don't use Vallejo and you use a Citadel, you could use a Dryad Bark instead. That colour is very, very similar to this colour as well. And I'm pretty much going to cover all of his cloak um, and, and, and all of his sleigh uh, in this particular color because this is going to be the base that we'll build from so all of the clothing apart from his shoes and his trousers and his beard are all going to be this color I'm also going to leave his little bag on the side uh, a different color because we're going to paint that a light green color as well just to mix things up a little so talking about the bag, here we go. We're gonna use a military green from Vallejo as a base color for this bag. And this is a really great dark um, matte color which, which covers a really, really nice sort of dark, dark green color. Again, this is a great color that we can boost and, and build a nice vibrance out of and get a few little bits of extra depth as we go. Now what I've done and what I've opted to do with this version of Radagast, because it's quite a big model and because there's so many different parts to the model, um, I didn't want to paint him all in one flat colour. So I'm going to actually paint him with a lot of different browns just to kind of break things up a little bit. Um, and by doing so then we're going to have something that's a little bit more pleasing on the eye and make it my own as well. So from there I'm going to paint his trousers using a light earth colour from AK Interactive. This is almost a little bit like a... Uh, a little bit like a Zandri dust, so kind of like a khaki-ish colour, but a light, light khaki colour. And I'm painting the trousers in this colour again, just to break things up a little uh, from him being too much of just one colour. Once I've painted his little trousers, I'm also then going to paint all of the little straps going around the sleigh, uh, going around the sled that he's riding, uh, using the same colour, just to tie these things together and get the, the uniform sort of colour in. Also, because this is nice and bright, this is going to allow the straps and things to really uh, stand off uh, that that dark, dark brown of the, the sled as well. So this is going to allow us to see where all these like rope-coloured straps and things like that are as well. Now, as I was saying, I'm trying to use a lot of different browns in an attempt not to make him look too uh, monotone. It would be easy to paint him all one sort of flat colour or use very similar sort of flat colours. But in so doing, I feel like the model then itself might become, as I say, too monotone. So it might look too flat or have just one sort of tone. So we're going to use a lot of different colours to build up a little bit more of depth and vibrancy. So once I've painted all of that, we're going to base the staff because Radagast's staff is actually tied just on uh, to the sled here. So we're going to paint this using flat brown. Now flat brown is something that I use quite often to paint things like um, wooden handles for weapons or trees and things like that. So we're going to paint the staff in this colour. And we're just going to use this colour to, to create a really nice base tone for this one. And the good thing with this, you can already see just how much that staff is going to stand out uh, from the sled and from the basic uh, from from the base tones that we're going to get out of the wood going around uh, the sled that he's riding as well and again that's going to create a really cool way of allowing that staff to really pop off uh, uh, off the min miniature so I'm then going to use a Riley Grey from uh, Scale 75 and this is pretty much a very very sort of bluish grey so it's almost like a sea blue grey. I know it's asking a few people in the community what their favourite sort of colours are and I noticed quite a few people say that they like sort of ocean blues and sea blue greys and things like that from Vallejo and I have a feeling this is quite a similar sort of colour. So this is a, a cool cool sort of blue blue tone colour um, and the reason why I'm using this to paint the rocks is just to create that cool temperature and that 
that cool sort of color as a base uh, for the, the, the rocks and the stones as well, which will add a little bit more to the depth because we don't want them to be just a flat gray. We're then going to use a Miskatonic Grey uh, from uh, Scale 75 again, and I'm going to paint all of the beard and his hair with this colour. Now, the difficulty that I found with Radagast himself was he's a brown wizard, he has a brown beard, but he's also greying in patches as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the hair um, and also the fur around the hat with this colour, but we're going to use our wash in a little bit to just build that little subtle hint of brown and things going through the beard. So we're going to use grey as the base and then we'll build that grey back up after we've put brown into it. So that should give us a little bit of a two-tone effect out of the beard in a nice easy sort of way. So you're not spending forever blending tones and colours and things like that. And we'll show you how we go with that a little bit later. Now something that I've noticed that's really fun with Radagast is he's wearing two different colour shoes. He has a blue wizard shoe on one foot and then a really sort of um, khaki, sandy sort of coloured shoe on the other foot. So for the first one we're going to use an imperial blue and we're just going to paint this little wizard shoe with this nice dark blue as a base. As I mentioned, uh, we're then going to use khaki to paint the shoe on the other side. This is going to look a little bit similar to his trousers using that light earth, but it is a little bit of a different colour. This one does have a little bit more um, of a richness to it, so that will separate the shoe from his trousers as well. What I'm also going to do is paint a couple of the rabbits using this khaki colour as well, and I'm going to pick these rabbits at complete random. So what I'm going to do with the rabbits on this one, instead of, again, making the them all monotone I'm gonna paint them all different colored so I'm gonna paint I think it's about three four maybe even five different colored rabbits and just to break up that normality of everything being one tone this should be a cool way of painting um, all these different rabbits and creating a very cool unique way of, of Radagast and, and, and a cool interesting little way um, of kind of making it my own as well as I said earlier so I'm going to paint a few of those rabbits using the orange brown as well. And the cool thing by doing this is you don't have to follow this directly. You don't have to paint all of these rabbits in different colors if you don't want to. If you like sort of the, the, the sort of creamy rabbits but you don't like the orange rabbits, then just take the orange out. Um, or if you just want to keep them all brown, uh, then you can paint them all brown. The idea behind me doing this is to just give you guys an option and an idea as to how many different ways you can paint different rabbit fur all in one video. So it's kind of a cool little uh, tutorial video in a way of showing you all these different kinds of colors so I'm gonna use flat brown for uh, a couple of these rabbits as well and flat brown is a really great sort of um, red tone brown so this one's gonna to tone up in a really nice sort of red color so so far we've got the creamy rabbits that are gonna look like snowy white rabbit we've got the uh, the orangey brown rabbits that are gonna go into like a really nice vibrant orange and now we've got this flat brown which is gonna have a little bit of a reddy tone as well so it's just giving us that depth it's given us all those different colors and a lot of different things uh, to look at as well and once the model is based with all of those colors and flowers and everything like that it's gonna look like a really vibrant lovely colorful um, individual sort of uh, model that will be a great display piece as well now as you can see because I'm doing all of these as base coats I'm not being overly precious on how I apply the base coats I'm just trying to cover all of these uh, models the best I can so I'm going to use a leather brown from uh, Army Painter as well. And again, I'm just picking random rabbits here. If you wanted a very basic and standard looking sort of brown tone, um, this would probably be the go-to one that I would use for these rabbits uh, because this is probably the most neutral and most natural uh, brown tone that I found out of all of the different colors that I've used. So if you just wanted to keep them all as one tone, this would probably be the brown that I would use personally. From there, I'm also going to add that flat brown. So this is the same color that we used for Radagast staff. And I'm just going to paint uh, the other couple of rabbits here with this one. And as I say, you can see now there's a lot of different tones, a lot of different colors. And we're trying to mix up all of those different browns as well, just to create a little bit more uh, character and depth and you know all these different things. And again, as I said, it's just a way of making it my own and making it a little bit more individual, uh, just so that it's, it's a cool and a fun thing to paint. And it's something that's a little bit different from the norm as well. 
Again, I'll have to apologise. Uh, it's a little bit awkward on times for me to talk because I am still currently just slightly unwell. So if you find that my voice is a little bit croaky or things like that, I do apologise. Uh, but this video has been waiting for a long time for me to put out, so I've been really, really excited to show you guys. From there then I'm just going to use Earth from Vallejo and this tone I'm just going to paint the whole of the base then. So I've used a Vallejo texture across the base as well. Um, you guys can use sort of all the different types of textures and basing equipment that you would normally use if you use, you know, your... your um, uh, your filler or spackle or if you use your uh, Games Workshop sort of uh, earth textures or anything like that. I opt for the Vallejo ones purely because they come in massive bottles. They come in such such big bottles that you can use them uh, time and time and time and time again and you don't run out anytime soon. So going back to that leather brown colour I'm then going to paint the tree on the one side so uh, these bits come in the box as well so when you're painting the model uh, these little basin bits the rock that uh, the sleigh is on uh, the trees the little uh, bird and things like that all of those come in the box so these are all parts of the diorama display uh, when you buy the model um, so this is why I'm including them in this little tutorial as well and the light earth that we used for Radagast's trousers, I'm going to paint on the tree stump on the opposite side. And again, that's just to tie some of these colours together a little bit and to break up that norm as well because uh, tree stumps and trees and all these different things, they come in all different kinds, so you don't want to paint them all just one flat brown. You kind of want to mix them up a little so that it gives you something more to look at. And again, using my favourite colour, which is the Dark Rust 302, we are then going to be careful and we're going to try to paint all of these leather straps that are tying all of these rabbits together. This is probably the most time consuming part of doing all of the base colours that I found, was going around and picking out all of the detail on these and just trying to be careful not to get that dark rust on the base colours that I've used. So try to take your time with this bit, this bit does take a little bit longer than some of the other bits. Uh, and this is a really cool way of just tying all of that colour and all of those browns together um, in a nice sort of easy fashion, just, just painting it all down into this, uh, th this dark sort of rust and from there then you can build this up into all different kinds of leather tones or leather colors and using your favorite kind of leather techniques to do so. I'm then going to use a dark blue gray and with a dark blue gray I'm just going to paint over the bird and again you would be tempted to paint the bird in something like a brown or something like that but purely for the um, reasons and the uh, idea of just separating it from the model and not making it too monotone I'm actually going to paint the bird in a sort of grey colour just to kind of make it a little bit different and so that the bird stands out and stands off the model itself because if the bird was brown and Radagast is brown and all of the rabbits are brown you could sort of like tie everything together and it might lose a little bit of the charm and the character uh, so this is why I've opted to go with so many different colors so I'm going to use a medium olive just to paint all of those leaves as well quickly on all of these trees so as you can see there's a few little branches with some leaves just spouting uh, across all of the, uh, the, the trees here so I'm just basing these using the medium olive and from there to make this as easy as possible I'm actually going to cover the whole model in a single layer of wash. So I'm using strong tone from the army painter um, and you might think this is uh, either brave or stupid or anything like that uh, but that's fine, that's fine, everyone's different, we all paint differently. The reason why I've done it this way is purely because I wanted to paint all of those base colours, see how the colours and the tones will come out and then tie them all together in one big foul swoop. Um, by painting them all in this one colour we're going to get a mixture of different things. So this is going to tie those browns together because dark tone uh, strong tone sorry not dark tone strong tone is a nice brown uh, wash so this is very similar to like an agrax earthshade from citadel and what this is going to do this is going to tie all those browns together it's also going to be a great um, shade and a great wash that works really well on the skin but it's also going to sit with a brown tone in that beard and hair like i was saying earlier where we can get that that two-tone effect in a very very easy easy way so this is why I've opted to paint it all in one uh, wash, all in one go, and then we'll build up from there just to make things easier and nice and quick and easy to follow as well. 
So from there, once all of that is dry, and once our shade is dry, we're going to move on to painting the skin, and I'm going to start straight away by going with the Cadian Flesh Tone, and I'm just going to pick out all of the details, the cheeks, the nose, the fingers. Then from there, we're going to paint half and half, so I'm going to use half of the Cadian Skin Tone and half of a Kislev Flesh, so that is just uh, one drop of each. And again, we're going to pick out all of those details, the nose, the cheeks, the fingers, and don't forget to paint his legs as well. That's something that is hugely important with this, is Radagast does have a little bit of his shins and calves showing through. So don't forget to paint the legs as well. You don't want to paint all of the skin and then come back later and realize, oh, I forgot to paint the legs. Uh, so yeah, don't forget that. Then we're going to use Kislev Flesh as the next highlight. And again, we're going to be a little bit more careful as to where we place this. And again, we're just going to pick out those cheekbones and the nose and just picking up where the light would catch across Radagast's face. The cool thing is because he's got such a big beard, there's not a great deal of skin to paint on this particular model, which means that you can be very, very gentle and just use a few little small uh, small layers using the very very tip of your brush. From there then I'm going to use Kislev Flesh and Flagon Flesh again half and half so this is just one blob of each and again just being more more uh, careful as to how much and where I place this just using the very tip of the brush across the ridge of the nose and just across the very edge of uh, the eye sockets and the cheekbones. Not forgetting to pick out the knuckles and bits like that just across the fingers uh, holding his hat on. And then for a final layer with the skin, this is just flayed one flesh on its own. Now you don't have to layer the skin as many times as I have. Uh, purely I've just done it uh, just to kind of build up a natural progression. And just to show you guys sort of how many layers you can put onto the skin to gain a really nice natural sort of progression and natural highlight to the skin as well. Um, but you know, you could stop at two or three, it's fine. So we're going to go back to that Miskatonic Grey that we painted the beard and hat with. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by stippling this Miskatonic Grey across the hat first. And we're going to stipple this because we're going to make this look and create this texture of fur or kind of create a fluffy kind of hat texture just by using the very tip of the brush. As you can see, that is already starting to look like there's some kind of texture and some kind of depth and detail to the hat, which is fantastic. Such an easy technique and yet such a great, great looking uh, little way of painting as well. So this is a really cool little um, interesting way of building up that sort of texture quality. From there then I'm just going to pick out some of those uh, details on the beard and some of the bits of the hair on the beard and on the back of his hair as well. What I'm going to do with this though is I'm going to focus this a little bit closer to his face and I'm not going to paint the uh, edges of the beard further down. So I'm going to leave some of the ones that are further down brownish and then just create the highlighting closer and closer to the face and the chin and things like that so that it almost looks like the grey hairs are a little bit newer and they are closer to his face. We're then going to move on and we're going to do the exact same stippling effect, uh, just highlighting this time. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to build that stippling up and you can see that effect that it's having on the hat already. And this is fantastic. This is great. Starting to look the part already. And then we're going to do the same thing just across uh, both sides of the hat because you can see there's little flaps on the hat as well that are flying around in the wind because he's traveling so fast. The rabbits are dragging him so quickly across the land as well as he tries to run away from the orcs. And we're going to do the same thing on the beard. We're just going to pick out some of those lighter colors. And again, like I say, we're going to keep the lighter tones closer to the face just to kind of create that two-tone effect so that it's a little bit more browny gray down the bottom and a little bit more lighter gray just across the top up here, just like so. From there then we're going to do the same thing just using white. So this is a nice, intense, bright, vibrant white colour. Um, so you can use any white for this uh, depending on what your favourite is. Uh, I'm just using the AK Interactive white for this one because it is a very, very vibrant white. And we're going to start with the stippling like normal, uh, like the other two layers that we've done. And look at that fur effect on that hat now, it's really starting to pop as well. And again just going to pick up some of the very, very extreme uh, extreme sort of close hairs to the face to just kind of give that a really really nice bright boost just around the face and just closer to the face area and again just across the the flap on the other side of the hat here just building these layers up as you can see a little bit more just across the hair 
Now, so from there, what we're going to do is we're going to use another wash, which is called a mid-brown. So like I was saying about just creating that two-tone effect, we're going to use this one just a little bit extra on that beard. Just because by painting the beard, it looks a little bit too white. So we're just going to use this very, very fine mid-brown color. And as you can see, we're starting to get a lot more sort of brownish two-tone out of this now. So we've got that brown to, uh, to white sort of ratio is really, really nice. From there then we're going to use the Dark Rust 302 and we're going to mix in some of the orange brown. So this is half and half, this is uh, one blob of each and this is going to be painting the inner coat. So this is going to be painting the inner jacket, so almost like the waistcoat inside. It's a little bit difficult to show you on camera, I'm trying my best to paint and show you guys sort of what I'm doing here. Uh, but as you can see there's a little bit of the inner coat that he's got because he, he's wearing sort of an inner coat then a big wider cloak as well. Um, so we're going to use the orangey colours and the orangey tones to paint that inner cloak as you can see and I'm just picking out all of those folds and just using a stipple in motion and things like that to create that texture uh, and, and to create sort of an illusion of texture as well. But we're going to use the same two, it's just this time I'm going to use two blobs of the orange brown to one blob of the dark rust. So instead of using half and half, this one is going to be a little bit more of a um, two thirds versus one third. So it's just one blob of the dark rust, two blobs of the uh, orange brown, and again using that stippling motion, we're just going to start to build that orange colour and that orange tone up. And as you can see, that vibrancy and that colour is starting to show through already, which is fantastic. From there then I'm going to use just the orange brown on its own and again this is a nice natural smooth progression because we're going from the dark dark base color and then we're going to slowly build our vibrancy up and that stippling effect is great for creating the illusion of texture as well and this is going to build in a really really nice natural natural vibrant way as well so like I said it's all about trying to um, it's all about trying to create sort of slightly different tones and colors so that he's not, he looks brown and he's wearing brown, but he's not all one flat brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use medium orange from uh, AK and I'm just gonna add a little bit of that into the orange brown just to create one final uh, vibrant boost just so that it looks like the light is catching onto some of that orange and just bringing out some of that color and texture as well. So as I say, it's just about kind of building those browns so that he is brown, but it's not all one flat brown. Uh, because that would be the worst thing for me is trying to paint this and create a, a mixed sort of texture um, or, or a really cool dynamic character, but have it all as one color um, because I don't think that would do the character justice. So from there, I'm gonna use that Dark Rust 302 and I'm gonna use that uh, Leather Brown from uh, Army Painter as well, which is a fantastic color. And this time, uh, using half and half like always, so this is just a 50-50, we're gonna stipple this just across the top of the hat. Once we've done the Dark Rust and Leather Brown combo, we're then gonna use the Leather Brown on its own. And as you can see, we're just gonna stipple that across the hat again, just to create that texture and that tone. And then it all it's also going to show through some of the color and some of the tone and depth and uh, definition from the colors below as well. Once we've done that, we're gonna use a base highlight of Monster Brown. So this is the most natural uh, color that, that highlights the uh, the leather brown and this is a really great sort of highlight and as you can see I'm just stippling this across that hat again creating that texture once more and this is creating a really really cool color for his hat. His hat almost looks like it is made out of some of the rabbit fur that we painted earlier and things like that. So we're then going to use the flat brown with the dark rust Again, we're going to use one blob of each, and this is what we're going to build. Uh, this is what we're going to build up, and this is what we're going to paint his overall cloak with. So this is going to be that ready sort of brown. So this brown tone, but it's going to be slightly different. It's going to have this sort of red uh, tinge to it, this sort of ready color to it as well. So this is going to have a really nice deep, deep sort of color tone, um, and it's going to it's going to look really, really lovely. Especially when we compare it with things like the trousers and, of course, the orange browns that we used for the inner cloak as well so that that waistcoat on the inside so as you can see I'm gonna paint over all of the folds uh, just trying to paint all of the different folded areas and once I've done that I'm then gonna use a very fine dry brush just to dry brush the back of the cloak there's so much detail and texture on this cloak um, that I feel like dry brushing the cloak would be the best option because this is gonna pick out all of those uh, highlighted points and all of those raised edges in a very easy 
easy way. From there, we're just gonna use that flat brown on its own. So we've done the Dark Rust 302 with the flat brown. Now we're just gonna use the flat brown on its own uh, just to build that highlight and build that tone. As you can see, I've got nice thin down paint on my brush so the paint is being manipulated and moved around the model very, very easily as well. And I'm gonna pick out all of those uh, details like so. And then we're gonna go into using the dry brush on the cloak again like so and again the reason being is because it's going to pick out those areas much much easier than sort of painting by hand on this one so the natural uh, progression the natural highlight to that then becomes a mahogany brown which again is a nice ready brown and this is the slight highlighted version of the browns that we've been using so we're going to be a little bit more careful now as to what area we're picking out with this so as you can see i'm just picking out all of the raised creases um, i'm picking out all of the textures there and again with this nice thin down paint you can see that this is already starting to blend straight into the model and blend straight into the miniature as well and again, like before, once we've done the hand painted bits on the sleeves, we're then gonna go in and dry brush the back of the cloak as well, just to get all of that detail showing through. Dry brushing does have a little bit of a messy, sort of gritty, sort of grimy kind of effect as well, which is good to add into the idea that there's textures and things on the back of the cloak. Now what I'm gonna do here, I'm using mahogany brown, but I'm adding a very, 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 very tiny, I say very, 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 I mean a very, very tiny, small amount of white to this. Now I don't normally highlight browns with white, normally I would use a cream color, uh, but for this I'm using an extremely thin paint and a very, very, very small amount of white. And the reason being is I just wanted to pick out on some of those very, very extreme edges, as you can see on the uh, the sleeve, some of those very extreme sort of folds and creases. And you can see I'm just using the very tip of my brush as well. Kind of lost count of the amount of times I've said very in that uh, part of the conversation there. And again, once more, just using that same texture, that same same layer. Now you can see I'm just starting to very much pick out on all of those uh, raised points and all of those detailed areas on the cloak. So once we've done with that, we're gonna go back onto the light earth and we're gonna to start to paint all of the trousers. Now, again, I'm gonna use a stippling effect on this, just create that illusion of texture as we've been talking about quite a lot. And we're gonna paint these trousers now, following those folds and following the creases and the pattern, uh, leaving sort of the wash do its thing because the wash is sat in all of those recessed areas. And as you can see, we're just gonna build these layers and textures up in a nice, simple, quick and easy way as well. It's going to make the model look really, really good. Again, you can see some of those colors and textures now are really sort of starting to separate the model. So as I was saying about him not being too flat or too monotone, you can see that these colors are really starting to bring it together and show sort of the model um, as a whole, which is really, really great. It's bringing out a lot of character. Once we've done the trousers, we're also gently going to pick out those um, ropes again on the sled so just the areas where all of the textures and all of those little ropes and things that we've painted across the sled are we're just going to use the very tip of the brush because this is kind of a dicey thing to paint from there then we're going to use the most natural highlight which is the vampiric flesh and vampiric flesh we're going to do the exact same thing as what we've just done we're going to use a stippling effect and we're going to pick out all of those raised areas on his trousers um, we're also going to use this on all of those ropes and vines and things that he's holding all of his sled together as well. And as you can see, that is a nice natural highlight, nice thin paint so that it, it blends into the miniature so that those highlights and things don't look too garish or over the top so that they look natural and, 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 and yeah, more pleasing on the eye as I normally like to say. And once all of those areas are done, we're then going to move on and use the military green and paint his little bag. So with his little bag, he seems to be carrying a lot of uh, plants and veggies and things like that. So we're going to paint all of these up now. We're going to start with the bag by using the military green. And again, you can see I got a nice thin down paint and I'm just going to paint the, the base color back in first before we go uh, too much on the highlighting. I'm going to try to pick out some of the details on the patterns. You could dry brush the bag if you wanted to, um, if, if you felt more comfortable dry brushing the bag. Like I said, with the cloak dry brushing has allowed me to pick out a lot more of the details. Um, and it's exactly the same thing with the bag as well. If you prefer, uh, you could do the exact same thing. 
So we're going to go with the military green and a medium olive, and then we're going to start to pick out some of those highlights. So as you can see, there are some folds and some creases in the bag, and by just picking out some of those, we're really going to sort of make a, a bit of a focus point so that it, it creates a lot more to look at on the uh, on the bag again than it being just one flat color we're then going to use the medium olive again just on its own and again we're just going to pick out some of those creases and using that stippling motion again it's just going to pick out a little bit of that highlighting while leaving the, uh, the the wash and the shade and the darker areas dark which is kind of creating that depth in a very quick and an easy sort of way and there we go, the bag is starting to look really, really great. You know, and it stands out as well from that brown. Because we've got so much brown on the model, that green just gives it something else to look at. It just kind of separates things. So I'm going to use deep green now on the veggies and things in the bag. Um, this is a really, really vibrant green. Um, I love the AK Vibrant Greens because these will really stand off the model. So I'm just going to pick out the leaves in this way. Um, and I'm also going to paint the leaves on the trees and things that we did uh, earlier in the same way as well later on. Uh, but these these vibrant greens are fantastic. So we're going to move on to use the light green, which again is another step up to that vibrant green. And you can already see those vibrant greens, how much they are really, really popping uh, in that little bag as well. So it really makes the, the greens look lush and vibrant and, and brand new. It's, it's, it's a lovely sort of way of painting. It's a lovely color to paint as well. So this time I'm just picking up the very edges of the veggies. We're going to move on to a new paint that I've got uh, called Peanut Butter, and I absolutely love this paint purely because it is called Peanut Butter, um, and it looks exactly like Peanut Butter, surprisingly enough. And that's all I'm going to do with this colour, is I'm just trying to pick out, uh, there's a small feather on Radagast's hat, and I'm just using that Peanut Butter just to uh, pick out the, 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 the feather, and then I'm going to use a high key yellow just to kind of edge highlight it, just to kind of make that texture and that depth look like uh, he's got this sort of light browny color feather also poking through his hat and again just using a different color to what I would normally do so to highlight the one shoot we're going to use an Ariane rod blue which sounds like a very very Welsh word um, Ariane rod sounds sounds very very Welsh indeed I don't know where they came up with the uh, the naming for the paint with the old scale 75 but that does indeed sound like a very very Welsh word and then we're going to paint the Ariane rod blue with an Amarth blue so 50 50 one of each half and half uh, so just going to build these little textures up on the shoe just going to build our vibrancy and I love the fact that he's wearing a blue shoe as well because again it separates those colors you know you can really see those browns the greens the blues we kind of create a lot of a uh, sort of vibrant character that would normally be associated with just being like flat brown and I love this I love how we can build him up so we're gonna use that Amarth blue on its own and just use that just across the very edges the tip of that little curly shoe that little wizard's boot that he's wearing and of course just a, around the edge as well we're gonna do the same thing but on the opposite shoe so we're gonna go back to the base color that we used which was khaki um, we're gonna stipple this across his uh, more khaki sort of uh, normal shoe I would say this little moccasin type thing and um, we're just going to use the tip of the brush to just kind of build the textures and build the color back up on here as well then once we're done with the uh, khaki we're going to use green ochre so this is a sort of subtle yellowish greeny kind of highlight to that khaki as well so again we're separating and making these sort of colors a little bit more uh, unique and kind of building that vibrancy and those textures and things like that and from there we're going to use our green ochre with a little bit of bone white as i said i would normally use bone white so a creamy sort of color to highlight browns uh, because it is a lot more natural and a lot more neutral than using white so again just using half and half so 50 percent of each and using the very very tip of my brush as you can see just trying to pick out those details as best i can and then once that's done we're going to go to a bosch chestnut 
uh, with this one now this is a scale 75 paint so I'm using a very very thin dry brush layer and that's all I'm gonna do is just dry brush the uh, the sled that he's riding trying to be as careful as possible not to get this on any of those little ropey bits that we painted earlier using that light earth vampiric flesh mix um, if you do make any mistakes it's okay you can go back and fix that that's it's not the end of the world you know it's not gonna it's not gonna be uh, too devastating uh, but bit by bit I'm just building this up as a nice thin layer and this is gonna blend quite nicely into that sled from there I'm gonna use a kokum copper and again just using a very very light layer again just trying to build this up and the reason why I'm opting for dry brushing this is purely because you can see there's a lot of sticky out sort of knobbly and bobbly bits on the um, on on the sled itself uh, which you could if you wanted to sit down and really sort of paint all of those bits yourself that's absolutely fine uh, like I always say they are miniatures you could paint them however you like uh, but for me I just found it a little bit easier just to dry brush these bits across so while we're at it, we're also then going to make a big start on doing all of the base and the rabbits. So I'm going to use a stonewall grey just to uh, dry brush the stones. Uh, because we've got that really nice sort of bluish texture underneath and then the wash itself creating that sort of browny dark colour. By painting this mid-tone as a dry brush, this is going to create a little bit more depth and just build that, that vibrancy of those rocks up. It's a very, very quick and easy way of painting stones. There's loads of different ways you can paint stones. You can add all different colours and textures. You can add greens, blues, all these different things. Um, but I'm just doing this nice and quick and easy here. So we're going to use a sky grey as well, just as a final edge highlight to those stones, just kind of picking out on the very, very, very extreme edges. Um, and again, you can add all different tones, all different colours. Uh, this is just me picking out the edges that I uh, really want to sort of boost and create a little bit more of a light source too. From there then, we're going to move back to the flat earth. Um, with the flat earth here, we are now going to start to paint Radagast's staff. Now, whereas I've dry brushed the sled, I'm actually going to hand paint the staff by using the very edge of my brush. And that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint these lines and pick out some of the raised edges and some of the areas where the staff is poking out and moving around and things like that. And I'm going to do this while trying to leave some semblances or some very thin lines of the base dark brown colour while I'm at it. And I'm doing that because that's going to create the illusion that there's ridges and textures and things like that in his staff. Using the same colour, I'm also then going to build up the brown tree that we put on the one side. And as you can see again, I'm just using the very edge of my brush just to pick out the lines and the details and the textures across the tree while leaving some of the base darker colours uh, showing through as well. Using this colour, because we had painted some of the rabbits, we're also going to go back in and paint some of those rabbits as well. Now, this is entirely personal choice on how you want to do this. So, some of the rabbits I painted by hand, uh, some of the rabbits then I've also gone in and dry brushed. And I'll show you both ways of doing that in this video, so that it gives you an idea as to how each way works. So, this is me just painting with thin layers. Painting by hand using the very tip of the brush just to pick out the hairs, the details and things like that. So this is the flat brown. Um, so this is, yeah, this is the flat brown uh, rabbits that we've painted. So we've done uh, the tree, we've done the base colour for the staff and now we're also just doing the rabbits here as well. And there are going to be a few different colours and a few different textures and things like that that we paint. Um, and that's why the video is so long, I'm sorry. But from there then we're going to use the highlight which is a beige brown so we're going uh, straight up into the next highlight and again using the exact same technique i'm just painting the staff first and as you can see i'm picking up the details while leaving some of that original color in there so that's creating that depth we've got the shadows to the highlights all in one go you see just like so and it's creating a really really cool texture and a really really cool level of detail and subtle detail onto the miniature as well you're going to do the same thing on the tree and then also the same thing on those rabbits so as i said showing you both ways of painting at the moment i'm just going to use the painting by hand so painting with the very very tip of the brush to pick out those details as much as i can both ways of painting, whether it be dry brushing or painting by hand like this, are perfectly fine. It is just down to personal choice. From there, I'm going to use the beige brown with the vampiric um, 
flash just to create the final highlight uh, for the staff and again as you can see just using the tip of the brush just to pick out all of those different parts of the wood and all of those different strands of the wood to create that that illusion that there are um, more sort of deeper sort of ridges and strands and things like that going through uh, the, the staff itself. And again using that same colour, that same texture, we're then going to also paint up the rabbits here just across on the side. So as you can see I'm using a lot of the stippling effect as well because on the head of the rabbits they don't have the fur in the same way as the body by creating the stippling effect on the head that's kind of adding to the depth and the texture that you're kind of getting out of the fur uh, on the back of the rabbit as well as you can see. And again we're just trying to be as careful as possible using the very edge of the brush, the very tip of the brush and using those nice thin down paints so that it blends and blurs into the, um, into the model itself. I'm then going to use light earth then going back to the rabbits that we painted using the khaki color and we're going to use the light earth to really sort of vibrant uh, boost these rabbits up into a really nice sort of creamy sort of whitish color um, so we're going to use this one and again for this one I'm using uh, the painting by hand technique so just using that stippling the very edge of the brush just trying to pick out all of those furs all of those details and as you can see it is a little bit more time consuming this is why I give you guys sort of the choice and the option of doing sort of multiple different ways because it's always good to have options and choices when you're painting Using that same colour, we're also going to then paint the lighter tree just on the other side. So whereas we painted the one tree on the one side brown, we're going to paint this one in this uh, light earth colour as well. Just creating, again, something more to look at so that the model isn't so flat and uh, the model isn't all just one colour. Again, using the same techniques, just using the very tip of the brush just to pick out all of those details and pick out all of those strands as well. From there we're going to use the vampiric flesh as we've done multiple times and we're just going to use this one now as the natural highlight. So again stippling this just across the rabbit fur, just across the face here and down the ears and of course picking out all of the furs as well in the same way. This is a really great natural uh, highlight to that flat earth, uh, that, that light earth colour, sorry. Uh, this is a really, really nice, vibrant highlight. And by using this just across the very tips of the fur, this will really sort of allow the fur to boost and the rabbit colour to boost and create this really nice, vibrant, sort of uh, light, snowy kind of rabbits as well, which is really, really great. It's actually one of my favourite colours on the rabbits when they're all finished, is this, this really sort of light, creamy, whitish colour is a real nice colour. There you go, you can just see that I'm picking out those details as much as possible, just down and across the legs, and just across the fur, and as well around the furry area, just around the face, and around the eyes as well. And we're going to do the same thing with the tree as what we did previously with the light earth colour, we're just going to use this vampiric flesh to pick out on all of those strands and all of those uh, little ridges and things just across the tree here. The good thing with using thin down paints is these paints will uh, progressively uh, naturally dry into a really nice sort of smooth texture which creates a really really lovely finish on your models. We're then going to go on with the orange brown colour and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to start to build up the orange brown on the rabbits. Now this is by far uh, the more vibrant colour of the rabbits and again if this is something that, that you would like to, uh, to paint as well. It really does stand out, it looks really really cool on the model as well having a mixture of these different colour rabbits. You'll have to let me know in the comments below which rabbit colour is your favourite, which one you think stands out the most or which one you think is more suited to the model. Um, because I always love to hear your guys' input and, and I always like to take on board what you guys say and whether or not you think this is a cool uh, way of painting or if you'd rather them all be one colour like in the movie or something, uh, you guys just let me know. So as you can see, using that orange brown as well, we're now going to start to use the dry brush in just to give you guys a bit of a comparison and to give you guys a little bit of a mix as to how similar or, or how easy this can be. We're going to use that orange brown and the medium orange then again. So this is the same sort of colours that we used on Radagast's uh, inner sort of tunic earlier. And we're just going to pick out some of the details on the rabbit's face and around the, uh, the ears and just the fur around the eye area as well. And again, so I'm showing you multiple different ways. So like I said, you could dry brush this, you can hand paint this. It is 
purely up to you. Whatever you find easier, whatever you prefer. Um, it is, as I say, your model, you paint them however you like. Both techniques work really, really, really well in slightly different ways, but you can already see the vibrancy of these orange rabbits really starting to boost now. You can see them really starting to stand out. These little orange uh, rabbits are really, really nice. So you're gonna use the medium orange on its own, and I'm just gonna dry brush this across the top just to kind of give this last vibrant boost just across the very top of the model. So I'm not gonna dry brush this too much on the underneath. This is gonna be more uh, exclusive to the top just to kind of create the depth of lighter on top, darker underneath. And then we're gonna move on to a Citadel Doombull Brown. Um, with the Doombull Brown, we're gonna to start to pick out those sort of ready colored uh, rabbits that we painted earlier. So these ones are gonna have a more sort of red brown tone to them. Uh, and we're gonna start by using this nice layer of Doombull Brown. And again, I'm just gonna use the dry brushing, uh, dry brushing technique for this one, uh, just to give you uh, another sort of option and another way of, of seeing how, how I'm painting these different things. Then we're gonna use Tusker Gore Fur. Uh, on top of the Doombull Brown and there we go you can already see now that red sort of color that vibrant red tone is starting to come through as well just like so now I'm using a very small dry brush to be a little bit more controlled dry brushing as a whole generally tends to be quite messy uh, so don't worry too much if you make a few mistakes uh, because that can happen you can always build those back up later so we're going to use the leather brown then just on the rabbits just at the front just like so and again I'm just going to dry brush this on just for the speed uh, just to show you how quickly this can be done um, and again just to give you guys a bit of a mix of techniques as well and from there as I said with the hat monster brown then becomes the more natural more neutral highlight to the uh, the leather brown and again just dry brush in this just across uh, the, the guys the little rabbits with the uh, just at the front now I picked the rabbits at pure random uh, as to which ones were going to be which colours and all things like that. I didn't plan this out, it was just a case of trying to paint them differently so that they would all be unique in their own way. From there then we're going to use a uh, leather painting technique that I've used a lot on this channel. So if, if you've watched a lot of my videos you'll know how I paint leather. But I'm just going to use the AK Interactive Leather Brown and I'm going to start to pick out all of these different reins here. Now I've seen a lot of different people paint the reins white or a more creamy colour. And you could do so. You could do that if you like. As I say, they're your models, you paint them however. Uh, for me, because I've got a tried and tested uh, leather colour that I enjoy painting. Um, I just figured I would stick with that and I also wanted to try to paint a slightly subtly different sort of leather uh, brown color on the reins as well just so that it's all brown but all different browns again. So we're going to use that leather brown and deep brown half and half again so that's just one blob of each and again we're just going to pick out all of the details on these leather straps. Again this is probably the most time consuming part of painting the uh, the models, painting the rabbits uh, was, was going through doing all of these different reins because you are kind of fixing a few things and, and fixing some of the errors that your dry brushing has made and things like that as well so don't worry too much if this takes a bit of time. Um, it's worth it in the end because once all of these colors tie together, it does look amazing by the end. With the dry brushing uh, that I mentioned earlier, um, whereas I said that I was dry brushing the stones, if you notice, I've also dry brushed the bird on the side, that, that nice light gray colors as well, just to kind of create into some kind of pigeon or something like that. And just to create a different tone. So as I said, the bird isn't brown and he stands off uh, the, the, the background and all of those browns as well. So I'm just using the deep brown on its own now, as you can see, and I'm being a little bit more careful as to which areas of the... Um, of the leathers that I'm picking out. I'm not worried too much about some of the color from underneath showing through because that's what's gonna give us the depth. Like I say to people with leathers, you kinda of want scratches and, and scrapes and things like that anyway. So once I've done all of those bits, uh, it's just a case then of basing it. And basing the model, I'm not gonna show you the whole basing process because it will take me far, far longer in the video. But pretty much I'm just using some of my static grass uh, as you can see here, just this particular static grass here. And then I'm also using one of the hobby rounds, the meadow blend flock. Um, so if you've seen me uh, do the little bit of scenery out of a CD, I'm using the exact same techniques to do the basing on this. Not only am I using flock, 
I'm also then using a lot of different uh, plants and foliage and things like that. And as you can see, with all of those plants and all of the grass, it really ties the model together. The model looks cool when it's painted, but once you put all of those basing colors and things together as well, it actually really, really stands out. The spider I painted uh, was also painted using the peanut butter. And as you can see, all those leaves on the trees, I've used the same colors that I used for the greenery in his, in his bag. And I'm just showing you a few of the different uh, plants and um, flowers and things like that that I picked up here. So just using a few just different static tufts, static grass, the, f uh, the meadow flock and things like that. And all in all, that is Radagast. As I said, I tried to paint him so that he wasn't too monotone. I tried to paint him so that he had a few different brown colors, but also added in things like the green, the blue to the shoe, uh, the gray bird and things like that. So you'll have to let me know in the comments below if you think it worked by adding different colors. And if you think as an overall project, it looks cool. Um, and also if the techniques were pretty easy to follow. Um, like I say, I'm sorry the video was so long, uh, but I'd rather show you the whole process rather than break it down into parts. Um, as always, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in, for watching, for your support, and for all of the positivity that you show the channel. Thank you again for getting me over to the 1,000 subscribers. That's a milestone I never thought uh, I would ever achieve, uh, and that is all down to you. So massive, massive thank you to you all. Thank you very much for all of your time, and I will see you guys on the next one.